Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing show, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. Blanket weed, pond scum, slime, slop, gunch, snotgrass. These are all terms concocted to describe a primitive form of plant life called Cladophora. Cladophora is a filamentous green algae commonly found floating in mats on the surface and is a normal part of the ecology of lakes during the warmer months. An increase in water temperature, sunlight, and the amount of nutrients present all aid in the colonization of the floating quagmire. Preferring a shallow water environment, blanket weed forms an overhead canopy, which provides shade, security, and an ambush point for largemouth bass and forage species alike. Penetrate the matted cover using heavy tackle and strong line, and you can be assured of one thing. You'll get them in the gunch. Like that. Uh, ooh, that's a big fish. That's a big fish out of the gunch. Gunch fish. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. It's a hot August afternoon in the Great Lakes State. This day, Hook and Look host Kim Stricker shares the front deck of his ranger boat with his friend, professional guide Marcel Veenstra. The two anglers remain indefatigably optimistic as they persistently penetrate a vast mat of floating scum for concealed largemouths. For it's with a new soft plastic bait design, Strike King's Rage Menace Grub, that the determined duo confidently probe the canopy and patiently await to jerk some heads. Yes, well. <laughs> On the fall, I felt it went tick, and I thought, you know, was that was that the weight or was that a fish? That is but some look fun stuff, boss. He swallowed that menace grub, big time. Nice little chunky blanket weed bass. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Look how look how yeah, some of these healthy they are. Yep, there's some really healthy, good colored fish in this lake. Well, I'll let them go right in the middle of the milfoil. Go right back. I love doing that. Fix my menace grub. Slide it up there. Got me a little weight stop on there for the tungsten weight. Bury the hook. Them little old rage tails. Let's do that again. The thing that's nice is you just don't know what's, what you're going to come out of there with. It's yep. like, you know the biggest ones in the lake live in that mess, and it's awesome. I mean, mid-summer, I mean, this is this is getting towards the end of summer, but we're still in a summer pattern. Yep. Uh, they've got two main places they want to go. They're either going to go deep off a break or they're going to get under this thick stuff. In lily pads, or yep. in this case, it's underneath this matted milfoil with the slime on it. You see all those bluegills? There's bluegills hanging underneath that mat. And as you well know, that's uh, one of the key forage for bass, and especially big bass. And that's an attraction here. Well, when I first found this area here, th th that's the, exactly what we were looking for. What we did was we seen there was some fresh grass in the area. We seen the mats were just getting primed up to, you know, to create that shade for that, you know, war extra warm weather. And what happened is we came in Everything was nice and flat, and it was a calm day. I could hear, the whole key to a lot of mat fishing is listening. If you, if you listen and you hear the bait breaking in there, you'll hear a little ticking up on the top. And if you hear that, that's right. music. If you have the right conditions, you're gonna catch fish. One of the things we've learned underwater. Ooh, there's, there's another fish, hold on, I'll be back with you on that. This is a good one. This is a good one. Oh, yes. Oh, baby. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you that story after. <laughs> I'm sitting here telling you the story and I lift my line up and it is five foot to the left. <laughs> that was awesome. Look at that. That's a beautiful chunk right there. Yeah, look at that. And again, the lake's loaded with a lot of how healthy. You don't see them ragged at all. Yep. God, look at that belly. 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he, he's eating good underneath that mat. We, that's like a refrigerator down there. I love doing that. I, I'll finish that story here in a second. <laughs> I started to say... Hold that thought. Hook and Look will be right back after a short break for our sponsors. Stay with us. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. Seagar, always the best. And by Boat U.S. Angler. Welcome back to Hook and Look. Kim is catching largemouth from under floating blanket weed, along with his good friend, professional fishing guide, Marcel Veenstra. Marcel points out the features of today's lure choice, Strike King's Rage Menace Grub. What I like about the bait is you have an action tail on the bait, and the thing is when you have the action tail, it still slides through this, uh, the mat really nice and smooth. So that's really good. What it does is it generates a, a lot of vibration once we get it through the mat, and I think that's right. the key. Usually a lot of the baits that we use, you know, they have tails that hang off of there and they hang you up trying to get through, but this right. is really getting through pretty good, and it's awesome. It has a slender profile yep. and slips right through that mat. Mm, that's a fish. He was way <laughs> up. a good one, too. He was way up in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Way to go, Marcel. <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> grass bass. We like that. <laughs> well, there, let's, let's look at that grass. Just like I said, now there's, there's your coontail, which there's a lot of it in there. And I'm sure there's some milfoil around there somewhere. Right there. Yep. He was in the That's thickest the patch up there. It was dying a little bit more than some of the other stuff, but still, I mean, an awesome fat fish, beautiful fish, hit that bait like it never seen something before. Oh my God, sure. that was fun stuff. We're not going <laughs> home today. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'll be late for dinner. <laughs> it gets me excited, I get pumped up. I love this. When you come out here and you know you got a lot of good fish in one area, you can't wait to make the next cast. I'm so psyched up just to get back out there. <laughs> I like it. Like it. My bait just fall out. Oh, it did. Oh, that's so nice. Oh. Look at, I mean, look at that thick hole that thing come on. Under all that slime. See, look how thick that is down there. I mean, he was right underneath the roof, boy. That's a good, <laughs> nice, solid fish. Absolutely. I like it. On that old menace scrub. It's got those little rage tails. Boy, it just kind of down and it's. What is that motion? <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Strick. Right down in the mat. Marcel brought to our attention earlier the amount of vibration emitted from the tails on the Rage Menace Grub. But to that, I want to point out a noteworthy phenomenon we discovered while reviewing underwater video and audio of this lure. While teamed with a one ounce tour grade tungsten bullet weight, as the bait punched through the mat, the hydrophones on our cameras picked up the incredible amount of sound created as the Menace Grub quickly fell, leaving a noisy bubble trail. In addition, as I jigged the menace grub off the bottom, it picked up trapped air from the weeds and muck, and once again, the rage tails emitted a good deal of sound. It appeared that the menace grub's vibrating rage tails, in combination with the air bubbles, produced a noise in the water, which obviously got the fish's attention. And our observations further revealed that without the trapped air bubbles, there wasn't nearly as much audible sound emitted. For example, when the weight didn't penetrate the mat completely on the initial drop, the menace grub didn't collect trapped air, and when freed, there wasn't nearly the amount of audible sound detected. Vibrating soft plastics and bubbles, something to think about from our underwater perspective. 
Hey, that way. I got him, got I got him, I got him. That looks... He's a little bigger than the littlest ones we've gotten, but... Oh, I got one, I got one. You got a good one? I don't know. It's gonna be bigger than yours. It is bigger. <laughs> 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 Way to go, Marcel. That's a stud. That was great. I'm just oh throwing mine away, I, but it's nothing to compare no. to yours. Good job. Oh, that was great, man. Back to back doubles. That just yeah, goes I mean, to show. Look how much we fished. Yep. And then you come to one spot. One little small area, and there's back to back fish like that. That's awesome. And that's how they are here a lot of the time. You, you'll see, you know, multiple fish in one little area. You'll go a little ways, and, but there is something underneath here that's holding them. Coming up, Danny Stricker divulges the inner environment of the slimy quagmire. Man, this stuff is nasty. Although this daunting creature emerging from the slimy quagmire may resemble the fictional humanoid mass of vegetable matter, Swamp Thing, in reality, it's only mild-mannered Danny Stricker, hard at work doing what he does best. Yes, at times, capturing underwater video for the Hook and Look television program can be darn right demanding, even hazardous. But Danny and his dad accept the challenge in stride. Oh, man. Look at this stuff. That's what I do. That's, this is my job. Walking on my playground. It's just a little murky on the outside, but as soon as I get under the mat, everything's nice and bright clear, a bunch of light beams coming through, it's really pretty picturesque. Let me see if I can tell a difference and kind of work through this. You wouldn't believe it, it's just really a thin, stringy wave underneath all this mat. A lot of these brighter areas, I think it's, it's a thinner fly. You know, it's, it doesn't have a whole lot of substance to the fly, just enough to coat the surface. You know, a lot of light can penetrate it, and, and the colors still stay really bright. I'm not much to go swimming uh, in weeds and stuff, but when I have a wetsuit on and a full face OTS mask, it doesn't bother me that much. Oh, by the I got a bunch of bluegill. That's what I like to see. She's filming under the darker stuff now, and you can see all the bluegill swimming through on the light and everything else. Kind of looks good. The cool thing is that you just don't realize is uh, underneath everything that's floating on top, the weeds are very sporadic. I mean, there's a lot of weeds here, but it's, it's sporadic enough that I can swim through it. I mean, there's gaps and holes. There's actually a lot of light coming through. Everything's pretty well lit blanket weed, just like any other plant form, when it's green and healthy, produces life-sustaining oxygen for the fish. Conversely, it emits carbon dioxide when it dies and decomposes. In all probability, that's the primary reason Marcel and I got most of our bites beneath the healthy scum. The bright greenish-yellow scum attracted the bluegills, in turn attracting the bass. Nevertheless, I asked Dandy to try to differentiate the two areas for us visually from a bass eye view. Let me get a shot of this because it's really bright green. It's real thin. The spider is real thin. It's got real green slime on the top like a healthy weed. But it's those bright colors. And then you turn a little bit more and you've got dark brown, dead, dying, decaying weed that just keep building up on top of each other. It's like six inches to a foot thick of a whole bunch of different weeds and milfoil and everything else just kind of clogged out on top of itself. Not a whole lot of light coming through it, real shady. So the, the light colored stuff is, is actually a thinner mat. The lighter color is actually just a thin weed woven together, kind of like a vine with this slime hanging on top of it. It's real thin. Let me see if I can pick this up. Yep, there it is. That's how thick it is, that's it. Just covering over the top. But everything else is real thick, real thick. And I can show you it so they get over to it. All right, 
Let's see here. Here's the dark spot. As you can see, I just came up through this, and look how much thicker it is on myself. I'm under here, and that's just it. Look at all this. It's thick. And that's just a bunch of stuff sitting on top of itself. Want more underwater content? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be right back. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by PowerPole. Swift, silent, secure. Deep Blue Coffee. Dive in. Ranger Boats. Still building legends, one at a time. And by Evinrude E-Tech. Power, performance, and 300 hours with no dealer scheduled maintenance. Without a doubt, professional anglers spend plenty of time on the water, but likewise, we spend countless hours towing our rigs down the road. Here's a few towing ideas we'd like to share, beginning with Boat US Angler member Mark Rose. Not only do I make sure I have a good spare tire when I leave home and get on the road, I also have a spare hub as well. Boat US Angler member Bill McDonald. When you're out on the road traveling, it's always good to make sure you got a good breaker bar and a wrench to take off your lug nuts. That works great, but I prefer this one right here. You know, it makes it a whole lot quicker and helps you get out of those situations a whole lot better. Boat US Angler member, Jonathan Van Dam. I always make sure I bring a set of wheel chocks, uh, just in case you get a flat in your truck, you need to chalk the trailer to uh, you unhook it so you can get to your spare and all that stuff. And uh, also, once you get to your hotel or wherever it is you're staying, uh, you can use them to, to truck the trailer for parking as well. Boat US Angler member, James Niggemeyer. Hey, a heavy-duty floor jack like this on the road is invaluable. A lot of times you have those bottle jacks in the unlevel ground, you can't get the job done right or quickly enough. So a nice floor jack like this, worth its weight in gold. Boat US Angler member, Louis Stout. I always take with me a toolbox and a roll of duct tape. Boat US Angler member, Mark Zona. And Kim, remember, I never leave without my traffic cones. In case there's a breakdown on the highway, tells people Z-Train's got a problem. And the other thing is, always holds my parking spot. Those are all great suggestions, but most importantly, when on the water and on the road, we don't forget our Boat US Angler membership card. Because for only a few extra bucks, we upgraded our benefits and enrolled in the On the Road Trailer Assist towing service. Check it out on their website. Cool. Well, we definitely like this yellow, or gr oh, it's actually yes. greener. Yes. This is, the browner stuff's dying. Yep. That's exactly right. I think they're underneath the yellow stuff, the yellowy green colored stuff. Now, is this dying because it's, the lake was treated? You, you know, know, the lake was treated a while back, and I, I kind of think some of that is caused by that. I also think that's the reason why a lot of the fish have moved into this section of the lake. I just think because the main lake grass, a lot of that has been treated. That, that's died off. There's been some live grass in here, and there's also cover and bait. All the bait's moved in here. <laughs> That's a good fish. <laughs> God, this is going to be like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, underneath that, I think there's a fish. <laughs> I need CPR. <laughs> oh my God. There's nothing wrong with that fish, but boy, I thought it was a lot bigger than that. That's a good oh fish. My. <laughs> that was kind of a funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of a deal, that's for sure. That's still a good fish. <laughs> There's no question. <laughs> you can certainly see why it's imperative to use strong braided line to winch not only the quality bass, but a whole lot of grass to boot. Seaguar cans and braided line may not be transparent underwater like Tatsu fluorocarbon, but to me that's no concern whenever employing a vertical presentation. The bass are hitting the bait primarily as a reaction strike as it falls vertically. They're not sitting there inspecting the lure or the line for any length of time. And most importantly, when you do get that bite, boom, you've got the strongest, most durable yeah. line to jerk them out of their way. Uh, ooh, that's a big fish, that's a big fish. It's the hole is the one right here. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. God, he's only about 12 inches. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Which hole did I tell you was going to come out? Yeah. <laughs> you did. You did. You said right there. Nice Look finish, at that huh? bad boy. Ooh. Oh, man. That felt good. That felt good. That had good. to feel really good. Let me hold on that little critter. It's got big lips on it. That's a hefty fish. Uh, get that <laughs> menace out of them. They like that menace grub, man, I'm telling you. It does get back yep. in that really well. God, that's a pretty fish. Look how fat he is. I'm gonna get it out there. Leah, look at the belly on it. Huh? Nothing like fishing in the Probably slot. That. <laughs> that's right. That's it. Out of the gunch. Gunch fish. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I mean, look at the boat. <laughs> you know you've been fishing in the slop when you got all this stuff all over it. God, it feels good. Well, let's, <laughs> let's put, that's a dandy fish. Yep. Look at that. Very nice. I'm throwing the grass away. Thank you, fish. I'm going to put you right back down in there. A big thanks to my friend Marcel Veenstra. Hey, if you're looking for a great trip on Lake St. Clair or a stellar inland lake here in Michigan, be sure to contact Marcel's Guide Service. I assure you, you won't be disappointed. On our next episode, I receive a hot tip from a knowledgeable friend that doesn't quite pan out as we hoped, forcing me into tournament mode. We'll scramble for quality bites next week on... Look and look! Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.